the last presentation of the day uh, from Dovetail. Um, and yeah, we've been talking just about that quite some world. Um, I'd just like to wind it up. I'm Dermot from uh, Dovetail. And um, it's, I think, a lot of people have said this afternoon. There's a very good vibe going around in the world of flight simulation at the moment. Things are, for those with some very long memories, um, like the good old days. It's yeah. about the good. And uh, so, an awful lot of interesting stuff today. And um, once again, thank you all very much for coming. Um, this show, which we've been running for a few years now, is the brainchild. And um, I think you'd be very, very pleased if you could see all these expected faces out here. Enjoyed it. And now I shall pass over to Steve from Dovetail, who will chat with us a little bit, I think, about what's in the world. Thank you. Just out for making a load of money, which I don't think we need any money, that would be great. But it's more than that for us. It really is important for us to make the field of flight simulator that everybody here would enjoy. And by that I mean disrupting the space so that we can try and do different things with flight simulation, not just repeat what we've been doing before. Although there is an argument to suggest that there needs to be some comparison to what we've been doing before. We want to do different and that carries a risk, which is why I would like to be quite open with you and really gauge the kind of opinions that you have and the feedback that I can get from everybody here and where we're trying to go with what we're doing. Are at 
shouldn't be aware of the nature of things that cause suffering. We also sometimes get hugely addicted to that. Think of like cruise lines where we overboard and we uh, never ending and we can see taking some very exciting steps in the in the future. And we've also been increasingly working <coughs> with some very recognizable developers on establishing the SDK, the toolkit, if you will, to enable people to create new experiences of content on the stage of flight simulators. When we came into this space, a lot of people thought that Dovetail would just come in and square it all off, <coughs> generally out of the way, and just try to dominate flight simulators. But could be further from the truth. We haven't always been very open to the public with all of our communications with all of the developers out there because we are at the end of the day still very professional software development studio that has an ultimate goal of doing the flight simulator. But we knew when we came into Flexi that with our small team at Dovetail and our small core team, we couldn't create the kind of experiences that everybody expects of us overboard. And also <coughs> we were new. Why couldn't we tap into the kind of experience that other developers have had in the flight sim space for many, many years in order to benefit flight sim world? Now, just like the community, a lot of the developers out there would ask us, why should we get involved in the flight sim world? We're quite happy in our post. Why do we want to try something new? So instead of just opening the floodgates to everybody and saying, here's a, a commission page, we need to start building some content, we think something will work, we think things won't. We work with select developers to try and forge a path forward for the SDK. So we care about tomorrow. And I know externally and even internally from the business point of view, everybody wants immediate results. We know we can't do that. We know where we're going, but we started asking people to find out where we were going. We've worked with and spoken to a great many established developers. And the response has often been quicker. But the only thing that's been missing is when they've asked for finance from being the core software. But we wanted to work alongside them to establish what that core software was and to turn it into a model. Earlier on, when I might have been an auditory signal, because this goes back to my opening statement about everybody has an opinion on what Dovetail Games are trying to do in this space. Everybody talks about they want to do that and people like Dovetail want some money. And sometimes there's an embarrassment there. Because how many of us have done this? And I want to be very open about it. So we're entering into the flight sim space in a new flight sim. We've got a limited amount of core content to begin with. We have a three day aircraft to kick off in May. And invariably we get people saying, I want to take a flight sim. I want to take a collective aircraft. I want to do airlines. I want to sandbox. Because we're so used to doing that in our flight sim space. We don't have the capacity to catch up with 20 years worth of flight sim content and inject it into core. So we wanted to work with developers that were controversial, ambitious about creating new experiences of flight simulation. And one of the reasons we started creating content for flight simulation internally specifically thinking about the Git SDK, our first internal developed mission package that we implemented, is that that is a separate team to the core. It's not a bunch of engineers that should be creating content for flight simulators or improving the core experience. It's a team of developers, a team of designers, if you will, able to think of new ways of using flight simulators. And when I talk about thinking, think of new ways of using flight simulators, these are often the guys along with the external developers out in conference like FSA and these types of media, that will actually drive the core software. So when the guys say, for example, uh, I need a new feature, and it isn't in the core software, their voice is quite loud because they are within the core world. It's very easy for us to say, let's just put out a small piece of software and let third parties get the content for us. We are doing that. 
and got better to see. What do you think you can see? The seed is like the fourth seed of the corn. So this is me jumping in too deep at the end of the day. If somebody has a crazy idea that I should be a clinician and finance and consultant, That kind of stuff invariably gets kicked to the curb in the world of machine learning. You always get a producer and you always get an engineer that says, that's not very high enough to do. You should do something else that is probably not quite as cheap. But those kind of things don't really drive the simulator forward. We care about doing the extensive things that have an impact. about driving the core software forwards and not resting on our laurels and always trying to improve things. We care about it. So we care about the fact that this clock image is uh, what it looked like a few weeks ago when we had the arrow operating in the upper skull. And you can see the lighting difference in the bottom image where we improved the rendering. Now we could just leave that aircraft in this state and move on to something else. But we don't. chapter I find, and there are many, many things that everybody else does, usually revolves around stocks uh, when people call for airlines. Right? Uh, 
a CQ star being injected into the bloodstream of the tree, and then we would say, up to here, you know, let's see, it's a CQ star, it's a CQ star, I like it, and then we can have the rhythm, and then we get into the right here. And so those are the kinds of experiences that people have already, already been able to find in the current poetry of the So it stands to reason that poetry is one of the in the world. It needs to become competitive in that space in order to simply see how great the world is. And then I came to care to really uh, have an eye bark bite, plan an eye bark bite. I want greater performance. I don't want to have to buy loads of new hardware in order to run sets in the way they expect. Why can't the default air quotes and terrain look like the president's big bear over at Crystal Ball? And when are they going to change those ventilation sea voices back to the smaller stuff at the very least that was available in and I'm quite happy to touch on all those things. So I'm giving you the kind of stuff that we're up to in development. So dynamic weather. I've made no secret of the fact that uh, true sky, the brightest in the world, is the first test. We're not just going to inject a beautiful looking sky, amazing looking clouds, and some dramatic sort of worm stuff. <laughs> We're not just going to leave it there. Okay? The weather, when we started working on this, and we had this grand vision of trying to disrupt the flight simulator, was oh so important. A lot of people actually turned around to us and said, well, why don't you just take some of this stuff off the shelf and inject it into the flight sim world? Um, or perhaps, the weather and the clouds and the sky, not that important to most people, it's a simulator. It absolutely is a simulator. And don't get me wrong, I'm never going to try and change that and turn it into a game. I keep repeating that because sometimes I don't think people believe me. Uh, the first step of True Sky is very much this. It is the first step. There is a lot more to come. So sometimes if you hear me talking about True Sky, where we are with Epic Kerbal, it's not that I think we've done a terrible job. Hugely excited to get further ahead. There's an end goal to this, and there's much more work to be done. And the work for the developer of True Sky has seen it. Uh, very closely in terms of trying to challenge their technology to deliver clear results. If you enjoy True Sky currently in Epic Carbon, it's all very stuck. Okay, that's, that's not good enough for us. very big ideas for live events. This isn't a case of us only seeking out parity with flight simulators that have gone through with this. This is about us achieving a level of parity that enables us to do some very different things with the live event. PDR2 is a portion of training. This is just making stuff look much better. You saw the two shots of the arrow one was very dark, one was far more realistic in the world. So when we integrate technology like that, as Lily says for the first few days, oh, that looks really cool. That looks far more realistic. And then they say, why can't we make the bike more brilliant? Why can't we try it with this terrain? Why can't we just switch it on so it will work? We can't, but we challenge ourselves in that sense. And that is something that we're working on at the moment. So can we raise the quality of the terrain same kind of level that you see with the aircraft in True Sky, but I think we have only right to replicate it. And it's no mean feat. It's going to be a huge challenge, but that is something that the team is working on. And I've seen those in development at this point in time, and I am excited about that. Dyna dynamic lighting for a richer nightline experience. Uh, night lights in flight sim world. We're very fortunate at Beko Games to have some very professional and very talented engineers and artists. They've already started playing around with this. And actually, dynamic night lights is something that uh, I did see on the horizon. And for some of the smaller guy over here at the bike park, they've already started to work in their own time. And I've seen some of the results of this. 
uh, one guy in particular, a chap called Alex, uh, very smart engineer, started working on one which came through and told me, well, why can't we just inject that into the test and use that? We were in early access with Steam, why can't we put a version of this out? Are we doing all of what we intended to achieve? So then you have to hold yourself back and you think, can I put it out? Every year you ask for X number of more things you've got to work on the, the writing on. And you also have to be very careful about the kind of things that you just talk without involving the developer that you're supposed to be working with. It's incredibly important that you don't keep modifying the engine on a whim week by week and disrupt the kind of work that they are doing. You have to be respectful of that. And also, someone shows up on another level and they let you play with it. So the night work, it is something that we're working on. Finally, performance and stability are the current focus. Uh, some of us at Bechtel run uh, very hardcore machines, you know, latest, and can be very, very or intermittent stability. So that is our current focus. That is the current company focus. So these things are driving the development team. If you just suck. In the GA space and just go there first. I think you'd be quite slow to evolve the core. So the aircraft and systems that you need to know from day one, you're not walking away from those, they are something concrete. Um, there are as many problems in the airborne. So there is problems for the aircraft and the systems inherent in the launch aircraft, and they are what you can improve them. So don't check it out and make your own. We put something out for early access that can be people downloading it. We're aware of the chat <coughs> in order to drive a burning drive a desire to improve it. Additional mission packs. Developers don't just swap them around. Yeah, everyone's got different disciplines. So unfortunately, you have to have a group of people, uh, very passionate design groups that care about customer data, working in mission pack companies. And those guys are the ones that run the mission. So we're very comfortable now with the GA space. There's already new things that come from new developers. So we need to start to expand. <coughs> this is the stuff. This, this is the kind of stuff that we talk about uh, internally and then we wonder whether or not we can do it. So I'm going to do that because um, I was working on a project late last night, so there's always people to talk about the team, so I can get away with this stuff. What I care about is uh, the checklist for one. We put the cold and dark checklist into the heart of the world. And when we put the cold and dark checklist in there, and when we announced it, there was a drone on the internet and people were saying, it's got to go down because it's putting us in a bad spot on the drone. And they weren't going to use their computers. And that's fine. That's fine. There's going to be so many things in places that have worked before. But every time we try and keep a comparison to the future, we're also looking at how we can so when we injected the cold and dark checklist, when we were using Phoenix Dark and the cold and dark space, we cared about the sense of being in traffic and looking around the clock at what you're doing. We cared about uh, the average guy or girl who is not as experienced as you or I that needs to be helped. And we care about trying to inject the experience that replicates the kind of things that you will experience in the real world. And I'm getting to my uh, slightly tired old second life type team, I've got my checklist out, and I just start doing that. It would be a lot easier to do that if you're sitting in the morning and start to do work. We care about the experiences, not just the cold and dark, but the being in the traffic and the approach and the emergency checklist. And I want to expand the functionality of that. There was another challenge that we had at Dovetail when we said, let's get rid of the user interface, <coughs> let's start again, let's create your own flight plan. And like a lot of these things, when you throw away the history and you start again, you can't hope to catch up to 20 years worth of effort in one day. So we had a feasible flight planning in there that enabled people to do simple A to B flights. So we need to do something more than that. We'll have 
The final one, which is uh, a personal project of my own, uh, I have a burning desire to improve this. Uh, ATC and the AI behaviour of the executive pilots is quite good work. Um, in brackets, they're talking about two star ATC. This is my dream. Much like we had a dream of replacing the weather engine in the field of structural uses is very different and drive things forward, I think we can do the same thing with ATC. Who's um, like some of the today? There's three main plants in the world. This is an area of efficiency. We don't get a great sense of being in it. We don't really get a great sense of traveling in it. And we certainly don't have the fear of busting a controlled airspace that we do in real life. Okay? Everything is too easy and functional. And when it becomes too easy, there's no sense of danger. Start to take shortcuts. Now I'm all for reviewing <coughs> energy management tools like Sandbox. That's okay. But actually, I want this to feel more rewarding. I want you to do this while you're operating in a specific part of the world or where you're training on this. I want you to feel as though you're engaging in the world with other pilots, even when you're flying solos at home on your own, uh, on a single machine, and not on online. It matters to me because removing all of those things is what makes flying in the real world awesome. That's not easy to answer with. Flight simulators are very quickly became uh, laboratory simulators, very specific things in flight sim, which is why you have so many great developers that come in and try to improve the experience. We want to improve the core of flight sim world so that it feels more realistic and more engaging. I think there's a lot of depth to that. And when you don't have it there, and when you just have weather, on and on about developers working with uh, Dovetail Games. Uh, Dovetail is pretty much in partnership with specific areas of the engine in their requirements. Uh, but I wanted to play a short video so that people can really understand what it is I'm going with. I think it's good. Fantastic old American warbird. It's a complete change of pace from the aircraft we've got in FSW right now. This add on provides quite a different experience from anything you've seen in FSW so far. If you've never flown a historic aircraft before, there is definitely a different feel to it. It's almost like time traveling. My name is Mike Armstrong Hay. I'm the CEO of Blue Sky Flight Simulations. The first thing you notice when you fly the people with the team is the sound. So you've got a massive, great Merlin engine sitting in front of you. It's a heavy aircraft, so when you apply the power, don't expect it to zoom off the runway straight away. You gain power slowly. Once it's all trimmed out, it's a very easy aircraft to fly. In fact, you can take your hands and feet off the controls and you'll fly straight on quite happily. My name is Chris Ellis, I'm the CEO of Blue Sky Fly Simulation. We spend a lot of time researching the aircraft, working with the physical aircraft itself. We had unique access to the manuals, to pilots, to technicians. When your pilot knows that they've written over the pilot's manual, when the manual says the top speed might be this, pilots say no, it can actually go even faster than that. These settings, so we'll cover that 
things that some people choose well. One of the unique experiences of starting a wall build is that they don't stop every single time. Having the ability to code those features into Cold Art is amazing for us. I think Flanton World is the next generation. It's going to take us into the next decade. It's been a fantastic development journey for us. Where we would normally develop something over a period of years, we've done the weeks. We understand how important it is to get the kinds of aircraft into the system that users want to fly. This is the first historic aircraft that we're going to release for FSW, but it's definitely not going to be the last. The community wants us to, to bring new, exciting aircraft add-ons to FSW, and we felt B40 was a great start. <laughs> but it's a great example of the kind of enthusiasm that has been met with by many developers in the community. Um, and every single developer that's become involved with Flanton World has had some kind of uh, piece of valuable knowledge to impart. And that dovetails from very interesting position that we've had. Certainly, I think we're up to uh, many people around spending time with one another. <laughs> so, um, what I wanted to do is not kind of try and wow you with flash graphics because I'm one of those people that really care about the detail. So, I want to come in from some of the devs uh, to make the best story as possible for that one because I do believe in the human process. This is not perfect by any means of the term. And also, when it comes to paint, this isn't about trying to wow you with. very serious. Retail Games makes uh, official Windows games on the PC. And we don't expect it to be your studio production uh, thing from anybody. Uh, if you ask them why are you making these windows, they will say it's because I like working on them, I like the vision, I like the tone. So it's a whole company approach. The company is built to enthusiasm so that we can continue it. And we care passionately about Flanton. I need to develop our Thank you.
Trying to work it together for this to make sense. Beyond the same way, yes, we need to make sense of the past. We need to work across the time to generate the understanding of the time of the time. So, what I would like to do now. Question and answer session at where anything goes. It would be really interesting for us to have to find someone that's skilled in that sort of thing. But I, I don't care. Like, if somebody wants to know what we're up to, I'll do my very best to answer. Sure, go on the back. <laughs> right. uh, yes. Um, right then, when I was driving up today, uh, and uh, Doug had that three hours of it, and it went like five hours, um, uh, I was thinking about the conversation that we had last week. And if I was sitting in the room, hmm. there would be an eye roll on that stage. And I'll be very honest. the general experience. But one thing that we always need to try to do and stress around unity meetings, I always call a lot of time and effort into something that doesn't get discussed. It's a couple of steps. Um, there was one guy that I talked to quite often at Red Tail, and he's been around a lot longer than me, but from a few backgrounds. And he said, Tyler, uh, he really cares about the problem. And for two years, he left me not to do the right thing. Sometimes you can get an eyebrow down. There is continuing development. So even if you said, you know, for example, we're not going to have that, does that mean that the church in the United States is completely finished? Well, that's a lie. Every prophet comes out of that world, the prophetic and praying the prophetic. They're all moving forward on the prophetic. It's not just adding an additional prophet, they're expanding the core. And the core team will immediately say, this is the next step that's going to happen. I don't have I know 
How about hardware? We, we, will the hardware that's out there now be compatible? Uh, the hardware that's out there now, there is a lot of hardware out there now. We do care about the kind of things that are used in people's homes and offices, um, and bedroom offices, and we do care for the electrical system. Um, there is uh, a chap that I know quite well now who uh, very kind of big in my medical supplies. Massively into pricing tables. And in the office where we've always got a kind of restricted amount of space, we have individual pieces of equipment, you know, some individual stuff that we can use. We go around to his house, he's converted his living room into a giant pricing table. I mean, he's. So when pricing rules are worth 10 now because normal things didn't work. And will it be predominantly, uh, as Jimmy Millie's flat says, keyboard and mouse to do the controls of the panels and, and, and so on? Will it be that way? Or will you have, and we had examples, I've seen examples of today on, on the stands of using monitors and producing software which, which can do that. Uh, others where you've got mechanical items which which do do it uh, and I wondered if you would link with any of the any of the that sort of company that to make something that would be specific for yourself and perhaps unique because the others don't seem to do that um, good question so I would treat um, those talented Providing a unique way for that to be injected into the company as well. So I've seen some really cool stuff over the past few years with things like this. But sometimes it takes a lot of effort to get things up and running, the reliability and stability of these systems, and sometimes the expenses of them. And some people will stick with it. They put up with that. I want everything to be free so that you can get into the experience and you can enjoy it. I don't ever mean dumbing everything down or simplifying it, but I mean making it cleaner. Um, so in answer to your question, yes, I do see those people taking control of the stuff as well. And I do think the development team will make their lives easier when it comes out of stuff like this as well. We'll, make, we'll have some way of enabling them to provide a cleaner, better, tighter experience. 
So um, linking back to the previous question about, um, it's like you talk about all the features that you want to see in Flight Sim World, like what you aim to get by the end of it. But the one thing I think the community as a whole like are starting to lose are like what time scale are we working on? Because you talk about all these new features, what you want in the simulator, but we don't like when do you plan to start it, when do you want to do it? So could we maybe like a roadmap, to, like just some way we can get time scale, like not when you complete it, but you really start looking into the different features you could add to the simulator. serious they are about delivering it because a lot of people stand up here you can see them yourself they're sitting in stands they just promise stuff but don't ever start it don't ever deliver it so we have started to do the time the dynamic life we have started Scales that we work towards our core game, but we, when you start talking about specific features, this technology and this tool we're developing typically relates to a three month window. But that's how long we give ourselves to deliver. And I think it's a fair time to do that. Uh, but just to close off that point, one of the things that I'm sometimes reluctant to do, and certainly when we're in edit, we reveal that in front of us. And I'll give you a good example. Started the lights first. We always have the best results in three minutes. They started the lights first and made some really big big progress. But then the more I looked at it, and the more that I consumed from this community and started to read the analytics, I thought we were probably heading in the wrong direction. So I like to have the flexibility and the more that goes to say, you know what, I think we should change that. While we're in this period, I trust we can take the time we need, but typically we start to work for three months. Um, got a question from a viewer. Uh, do you think the partnership with Steam has put off developers based on the high overhead and low returns to those making the add-ons, example PMDD? Um, has it put some people off? I think it's made some developers wary. So when we started out, uh, there was a lot of discussion about what's our core game do, what's our core game do with the add-on content, or are there none of those, and we have to write the stuff, and all these kind of things, and they're very technical. And we were reasonably calm at starting out, because some people uh, engaged with us and had these conversations and had these conversations, and they said, oh, I think you're all right, you're stitching up and you're doing this and you're this, that, and the other. Um, but you can have private business discussions about why uh, we believe the Steam partnership will be beneficial for blah, 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 beneficial for blah, 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 blah. And it's a different environment. So when you come into the new space and you disrupt it, uh, I'm not surprised that some people were a bit wary. Um, a lot of negativity got whipped up. <coughs> but we know the kind of reach that we have via Steam. And we know the kind of audience that we want to appeal to. And we know <coughs> So I think, yes, a lot of people were a little bit put off, but negative don't strike me as appealing to me. So that's starting to subside. And it's fine for people to remain negative about it if they want, although I will always encourage them to engage in conversations with us so that we can actually help them. Any more thoughts? We can uh, develop a fantastic piece of content. Oh, the silence.
like the content for the community. Mm. And we were caught by down that road. Oh, because of that, not being funny, we've got Just Fly, we've got TFDI Design, we've got some of the best developers here. Mm. But I find, no disrespect to higher developers, the community is the best developer because they are known for what they do. Uh, I'm getting the community involved in a lot of the world, but wouldn't that make lights and worlds the best way? I'm going to give you a yes and a no answer to the same thing. So, yes, I think about it all the time. Um, I, I agree that that would be wrong. I'm sure there's much in this country that you can do to project the community mm -hmm. being the best across the board. For example, um, at my local airport is Rochester in GTA, and it bothers me that it is the inner city there or the one way to stop one day in Manchester. It's these kind of things that just feel wrong to the experience. And I have played around with some pieces of software to try and keep the airports in my uh, heart of the country. But it's not the software that's been developed that's worked in the world, it's the content that's worked in the world. So it's a frustrating experience to an extent. It certainly isn't the greatest piece of software in the world. And I, I do want the community to be able to uh, expand that view and do more work towards it. But my, I guess, dream developers focusing on the content that we do, as well as the community that we do. And right now, we've only really got one of those tracks, which is select developers, because we're so new. Do I want to bring them in? Yes. Well, our answer is, make your dream to become a community and get involved straight away, get it escalated, and get lots and lots of other people to see. It's going to be a high-end drive soon. into it, um, into the community, we've got to get the community involved and move to it to, to get this project done. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, so, I don't disagree with your, your focus, but if I speak to developers, they'll say they've never been able to get the word into it because it's the community is so new to them. Oh no, well, so it's like when you look at what it can actually offer, it's not only on the basis, you've got the high-end developers like they are set, uh, building content for airports. Also, you got off off the track, uh, my selects who go and it's massive, pretty soon. Then you know, when you look at the San Francisco, it's mind busting as well. And it's getting that quick, quick content into the system that would be our, our sole focus uh, and to get it rolling. Yeah, but it's yeah. not my sin. Not my <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, yeah. if it was your sin, maybe that would be the way to go. The, the challenge is always, you know, and I'm going to describe people like Marvel and say, you have a number of marbles, well, you haven't done it today. But we have thought about bringing the community in, and I don't want to give you the secret sauce, we've thought about bringing the community in to develop uh, new experiences of flights in the world that might It's not in our interest right now to just copy everybody else. Um, we try to bring a different approach. So I think we will get there, but you'll have to bear with us. Um, someone has to hit you with an SDK question. So you talk about um, putting it, so you put it out, talking about working with developers, like improving it in the future and all that. So like, how that help you guys in like, the future of talking to the developers themselves, the SDK? And the other thing is, like, how will it release? Because there's also talks in the past how it's only going to be like an internal thing where only developers will be able to get the SDK. It won't be like released for the open community. So is that is that what's the case, or is it going to be like released to everyone? Like, how does it help the company out as well? The SDK. So let me start with that from top to bottom. So SDK, the development kit, the documentation, the tools, the latest versions of tools, which we've got as well. Whether it's version of the uh, Tune Sync Connect. Those pieces, those tools, and the documentation and examples that go along with it, um, we would expect to be up and running for later next year. So, and that's been a burning question in the community for a long time. When are they going to release the SDK? But you could have just put an SDK out there and said, this is it, it's a green box, done. 
but we started to work with developers to get their internal rules approved. And then we had to agree to the Internet Code Commission and all that sort of stuff. And it was a big thing. Um, and it was important for us to do that to ensure that the tool was mature enough. So as a developer, uh, first and foremost, my contact has been on a day-to-day -day basis with other developers. Um, and I don't think that we're ever looking to exclude anybody, even if something appears to us having to do. We don't want to put the brakes on wider distribution of things like the SDK, because we don't want to free fall until it's the bus has been put out, if that makes sense. You know, we don't want early access SDK, for instance, mm -hmm. and that people say, oh, well, you know, the problem is that you're working on changing the software so that the tools are no longer there. That's just massively frustrating for everybody. Uh, so we couldn't really win either way. By trying to do it properly, uh, there were some constraints. But we care about the long game, we want to see it develop forever. And we do imagine that everybody is going to get on the tool at some point, that's how we work. We just care about ensuring that they have a decent experience, we can help them with what they're doing, Ultimately, they have visibility as to where quite a few years going, so that we can work together to improve it. Any last questions, or am I asking for a bit about our business and about all this? Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.